Bom dia. Today I will speak to you about the uh, fertilization in organic management system. Uh, the most important uh, future aspect of uh, uh, organic management of fertilization is that the target of our management is the soil, is not the tree. So we have to consider to fertilize the soil. And consequently, the tree must find the nutrients required into the soil. This opens some uh, challenge to uh, the management. First of all, the mm, most important mineral fertilizers are not allowed in organic management. So only organic fertilizer are allowed and this means that the nutrients are not available for plant root uptake. It takes some time from organic to mineral nutrients to be available for root uptake. And this is sometimes difficult to predict and should be carefully evaluated into the soil. The objective of organic fertilization is not much different from the conventional fertilization management. However, uh, food quality is expected to be high, to be improved under organic management. We we'll see that this is not always true. However, uh, nutritional values of fruit, the attraction of the fruit uh, by the consumers, as well as the taste and aroma, are expected to be higher in organic management compared with conventional or integrated crop management. One of the aspects that is uh, uh, probably mm, more important uh, under organic fertilization is the environmental preservation. But I would consider that organic management of fertilizer will also allow to mitigate the pollution impact of the uh, human um, in terms of sequestration of carbon dioxide. Uh, carbon dioxide. So we, if we uh, manage, if we use organic fertilization correctly, we might expect to have a, a reduction of carbon dioxide in the environment. And this will help, of course, growers to increase their profit. However, we have to consider what are the three requirements because we have to focus on the soil. The soil is our target, but we must uh, allow the nutrient to be available in the soil throughout the growing cycle, throughout the vegetative season for our fruit trees. Here we have some uh, tree species and the request of nutrients, of some micronutrients throughout the season. We see that there are differences in terms of uh, requirement and grape wine, for example, is one of the species that has the lowest request of nutrients, just 20 to 60 kilos of nitrogen per year per hectare, around 40 to 120 kilos of potassium, less than 100 kilos of calcium per year per hectare, a few units of magnesium and phosphorus. And it's quite low if we compare with some other species like kiwi fruit that require up to 200 kilos of nitrogen per year, up to 200 kilos of potassium and calcium that are values figures that are similar to peach, which require something like 90, 150 kilos of nitrogen and 100 kilos of potassium during the year. So this is important and we have to allow this nutrient to be in the soil. Another important um, aspect to consider when we approach the management of organic fertilization is the kinetics of uptake of the nutrients. 
Here is reported the kinetics of nitrogen that is a mobile nutrient in the soil and in the plant. And there are a few mobile nutrients along with nitrogen. Also, we can consider potassium and boron as mobile nutrients. And we see that this has a, a particularly a characteristic before bloom in the early stage of uh, um, vegetative growth, the root uptake of nitrogen is quite low. It is less than 10% in peach, and it reaches up to 25% in grape wine. This because trees can uh, use reserves that have been made the previous year, and they use reserve at the beginning of the following season. So the root uptake is very little, and the efficiency of the nutrients in this time of the season is quite low. So having fertilizer, having nutrients available at this time is not exactly the best uh, uh, situation because uh, mobile nutrients some, such as nitrogen can be um, uh, lost by uh, leachings or by runoff if the season is uh, rainy. We see that the most important time for nitrogen availability is from bloom to uh, harvest, more or less. In peach, for example, uh, the amount of nutrients of uh, nitrogen is from fruit set to the uh, harvest is about 65%. And this is the time where we have to allow nutrient in the soil uh, in the highest, highest amount. Then later in the season, after harvest and until leaf fall, 25% of nutrient is still uptaken by the roots, and this is delivered to the storage uh, tissues, to the roots, to the trunk, and this makes, again, the reserves for the, the next season. So with a, a picture that is here reported as the green line, we see that at the beginning, the uh, uh, nutrient in the soil at the beginning of the season uh, is not exactly, it should be a little bit low, and then increase the availability of nutrient throughout the season, and then again to decrease. According to this uh, picture that is good for mobile nutrients, we have established some threshold of nitrogen in the soil for palm fruit, stone fruit, kiwi fruit, grape wine, and walnut that are the most common fruit trees in uh, the area where I work and where I um, where I live. So before bud sprout, uh, nitrogen is not required in the soil. So we consider less than five parts per million as the threshold that is optimal for all the species. Until full bloom, a little bit higher concentration for palm fruit. For sure, for kiwi fruit and grape wine, that has a, a late bloom compared with palm fruit and with um, stone fruit. Then from fruit set to fruit growth, we need the highest amount of um, concentration of uh, mineral nitrogen, mainly nitrate nitrogen, up to 30 parts per million for kiwi fruit and for stone fruit. Then at harvest, and uh, uh, it decreased a little, and at leaf fall again, we don't need any um, nitrogen, mineral nitrogen in the soil because it's going to be a rainy season and it's going to be lost in the environment. What happens if these thresholds are not met? What happens if we are low in terms of nitrogen availability? We have to use fertilizer, organic fertilizer, that have a fast release rate of nitrogen. Among these uh, fertilizers that are allowed in organic farming, we would we, we consider the blood meal that is available uh, because it comes from the um, agri food industries. Uh, also, we have some uh, um, fish powder. Uh, still available uh, all over the world, as well as feather meal. 
Well, uh, uh, guano, uh, seabird guano uh, in Europe is not, uh, is difficult to find actually, it is not uh, present in the market, but all these material, I don't know, maybe in, in Brazil it is, uh, it is on the market, it is available on the market, but all these um, organic fertilizers can release nitrogen, 50% of the nitrogen in one week. This can help if we have kind of deficiency and we are below the thresholds that we have seen before in the slide, in the previous slide. If we have a higher amount of nitrogen, uh, mineral nitrogen, higher than the threshold that we have suggested with the potential of uh, leaching or potential of extra excess of uh, vigor for the tree, we can use intercropping. We can use some different uh, species of, of, of um, vegetables in order to compete with the nitrogen and then decrease the amount of nitrogen in the soil if it is high to um, be a problem with the possible pollution. So some strategies that we have to keep in mind when we uh, manage organic fertilization is uh, the use of organic material. We have to increase soil fertility because soil is our target and the only way to increase soil fertility is by increasing soil organic matter. In Europe, in the Mediterranean um, basin, uh, we have uh, calcareous soil with a big buffer capacity, so organic matter is in some way sequestrated and can last a long, for a long time in the soil. In Brazil, it's a little bit different because you have a high temperature, you have rain, and so you have to choose the correct organic material to incorporate into your soil. Using organic material is uh, the most important um, issue under organic fertilizer management. Other uh, agronomic practices are strongly recommended. Crop rotation is strongly recommended. Uh, however, often we can find that also under organic fruit management, we have um, replanting condition. And this is very bad in terms of, of production, in terms of disease pressure. Biodiversity should be uh, increased and promoted. Biodiversity uh, meaning use of different intercropping every year. And also use, of course, organic matter in different way uh, before planting and during the lifetime of the, of the orchard. In Europe also we can, we can account on or rely on some mineral fertilizer that are permitted for specific situation like calcium chloride on apple to prevent disorders, or like um, iron chelates. I'm quite uh, um, contrary to this uh, <laughs> use because we can manage iron chlorosis without iron chelates, but this is allowed under our legislation. Of course, one of the most important things, and we have to work in the future on this aspect, is the continuous evaluation of soil fertility that can help us, you know, to uh, reach our goal. Organic matter is very important in terms of not only of fertility, but also of soil and environment orchard resi resilience. Here we see the same grape wine in the very dry summer of 2017 in North Italy. In uh, your left, uh, uh, soil with 1.3% of organic matter that is common in our area. On the right side, there is a, a soil with 9% of organic matter. You see the difference in terms of vegetation and in terms of plant uh, uh, response. It's a uh, different, uh, different word, I would say. We have to work on organic matter. As I said before, we have different uh, organic matter uh, that mainly we can consider fresh or uh, stabilized. Fresh organic matter, raw organic matter, or stabilized. And we see later what is the difference between the two. 
and also we can increase uh, organic matter through the management of the uh, orchard orchard floor or using uh, appropriate crop residues in terms of um, recycling of organic material in the orchard. Uh, we have, when we consider organic matter, we have to keep in mind that the stabilization proce process of organic matter takes oxygen, requires a lot of oxygen. So if we, we apply uh, fresh organic matter in the root zone, we might have anoxia. And this can create problem uh, up to uh, make uh, the toxicity for our fruit trees. Another thing that must be uh, considered is the ratio between carbon and nitrogen of the organic matter that we use. If the carbon to nitrogen ratio is low, lower than 10, that means that the organic matter makes available nitrogen and makes available nutrients for root uptake. If the carbon to nitrogen ratio is above 20, so we have a new humification and we have a decrease of nitrogen from our soil because it goes to feed bacteria, but the bacteria are responsible for the production of humus, stable organic matter. That's all. This is important in terms of applying or deploy nutrients from our soil. Cover crop is one of the most important way to apply raw organic matter. Cover crop beside um, the uh, positive effect on chemical fertilization also improve the soil structure and aeration because it takes oxygen down in the deeper um, soil profile according to the kind of uh, vegetable species that we, we, we choose. It can have a bio biocidal effect. It can interact, it can control in some way um, disease and nematodes and can also prevent the leaching of uh, mineral nitrogen if it is used over winter. We have different species. Here are some uh, leguminous like uh, broad bean or vetch that can fix nitrogen from the uh, atmosphere. Leguminous like white lupin or chickpea can mobilize uh, phosphorus where phosphorus is not uh, so soluble for root uptake. Grass like uh, oat, that of course is a graminaceous, can make available, uh, increase the availability of metals like iron. Or rap seeds, Brassicace family, Brassicanapus, has a biocidal effect. It can be used every year to, uh, um, in some way, uh, counteract the effect of nematodes, uh, mitigate the effect of planting, replanting disease. What usually is done is to plant these crops over the, at the end of the summer, so have this crop over winter, and then incorporated into the soil uh, early in the in the spring to um, have the maximum effect in terms of um, organic material that is uh, supplied to the soil here are some values from literature and you see that these uh, uh, cover crops can incorporate into the soil up to 15 tons of dry matter Per, per hectare, per year, with an amount of recycled nitrogen that goes from a few uh, kilos up to 200 kilos. This is not a, 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 an application of nitrogen, it's simply a recycle. Nitrogen is taken up by the, the grass and it is again uh, put it into the soil, tilled into the soil. The use of pruning wood can be important to increase the bearing capacity of the ground, of the soil. So our machinery, our tractors can move uh, inside the, the, the orchard into the alley without making trouble in terms of structure of the soil. So leaving aeration in the root system. This is very important and it's very cheap, but most of the people don't use this technique to increase the bearing capacity of the ground. Of course, leaves, spores, we have studied 
leaves and the nutrient in the leaves. And we have discovered that these simple process bring back lots of nutrients that are then made available for the following season. The stabilized organic material is another way to use organic uh, material. And this is probably the most important uh, because this is a real fertilizer. So the stabilization of the organic material always required oxygen, as it is in red, and produce carbon dioxide and ammonia. So it is in some way uh, impacting, make, uh, of course, production of greenhouse gas, but this is uh, something that we can tolerate. And at the end of the process, uh, on our right, we may see a stabilization and a humification of the organic matter. We have mineral inside, we have water, we have microorganisms, but we don't have uh, dangerous bacteria, and we don't have the seeds of the weed because the heat that is produced and that is regulated inside the composting time uh, is uh, able to sterilize the material from a dangerous bacteria and from the potential weeds. So we might use lots of organic material to produce new fertilizer. For example, we can use the waste from the winery like grape pomace. We can use the waste from garden, urban garden, domestic garden management in terms of uh, um, wood that is produced, waste from any kind of agro-industry processes um, that might involve the, um, both fruit and vegetables. We might use poultry manure and all this material as a different composition that must be mixed in order to have a good final products, but the most important source of organic material are the domestic organic waste. What we produce every day, cities like um, Sao Paulo, like uh, uh, Rio de Janeiro, produce billions of tons every year of organic material. If we recycle this material, we have lots of organic uh, material that can be used for producing a good fertilizer. In Italy, we, uh, in our area, in my area, we recycle almost 80% of the organic material. So we have a lot of this uh, compost, uh, let's say uh, municipal solid uh, compost. And after 90 days of stabilization under aeration, it makes a very interesting fertilizer. We have here some data of the use of this uh, material in, as a fertilizer. And in the upper part of the slides, we have the amount of nitrate nitrogen that is released by compost and by mineral fertilization in a time that is almost 10, 11 years. And we don't see much difference between the two way of fertilization. 130 kilos of nitrogen as mineral nitrogen and, one, and 10 tons of compost every year mix. The availability of nitrate between five and 20 parts per million as we have seen that is the best for peach development and peach growth. At the same time, microbial biomass, and this is the lower part of the slides, has been increased, meaning that the effect on biological fertility is clear uh, throughout the 10 years of investigation. The good effect of this material was found also in root development, in terms of root production. Here is the number of roots in four years of investigation. And we see that the compost, the application of stabilized organic material, has increased the number of roots uh, significantly, up to 200, 250 roots every year, with an increase also in the root lifetime, survivorship. So we have a higher amount of roots, and they stand longer in the, in the, in the orchard, mainly in the deeper soil layer, in the soil layer that goes from 60 to 80s. So that means a good stabilization of the, of the trees. So from one way, the tree invests in new roots, 
but these roots have a longer lifetime okay so we don't have a um, different allocation of carbon it's just a different way to invest carbon and we see that the compost has an average lifetime of the roots of 269 days is the black uh, circle line on your left while mineral has a lifetime um, average lifetime of 227 days almost 40 days lower more than 40 day, 50 day 40 days lower as uh, this is similar to the control and the lifetime increase in the deeper uh, soil profile compared uh, to the top layer of the soil this is in the right part of the slides you see the black circle are the uh, top soil layer and here the lifetime is a little bit um, shorter than in the deeper this higher survivorship seems to be related to the availability of nitrate nitrogen in the range between zero and 20 parts per million that is the range that we want to allow during the summer so the highest is the amount of nitrogen uh, nitrate that we have in the range of 20 parts per zero 20 parts per million the longer is the lifetime of the roots up to 400 days of survivorship that is more than one year they're talking about carbon sequestration of course using organic matter organic material organic fertilizer also allows the sequestration of carbon into the soil this is a, a report a balance in 14 years during the whole life, lifetime of this orchard of this peach orchard and we see that the carbon <clears throat> that has been uh, tilled sequestrated into the soil for compost it's always higher than compared to mineral both at the um, top layer of the soil we have 60 uh, tons of carbon compared to 29 tons for mineral and if we go in the deeper soil layer the same um, figures the same trends doesn't change with the final of the total carbon sequestrated after compost application of 137 ton per hectares um, and 82 tons uh, in, in uh, case of mineral fertilization. So if you want to make a balance, we started with our soil with 74 ton of carbon in the soil. After 14 years, mineral fertilization increased the concentration the amount of carbon up to 82 ton and compost increase up to 137 ton meaning a difference between compost use and mineral fertilizer use of 55 ton but in terms of carbon dioxide it's about 200 ton of carbon dioxide that has been sequestrated during the lifetime of the earth so that means that if we produce uh, nectarine with compost we might say that we have sequestrated 200 or more than 200 tons of carbon dioxide and this is you know a good <laughs> presentation for our for our crop the same balance we can check for nitrogen and for all the other nutrients and the figure doesn't change a lot if we consider unfertilized control, the total amount of nitrogen that has been removed with fruits and uh, has been stored into the trunk and the branch is about 36 kilos per year per hectare. You see the first uh, figure, the first tree in, our le in your left. If we consider the mineral fertilization, the total nitrogen removed uh, increased up to 41 kilos per year per hectare. Nitrogen in fruit and in wood if we go to compost at 10 ton per hectare the figures goes up to 49 kilos per year per hectare the fraction of nitrogen recycled recycled through the leaves and through the pruning wood is 40 kilo in terms of control it's going to be 66 kilos for mineral fertilization it's going to be 70 kilos for compost so meaning that our the engine of our uh, car or our uh, orchard increase in terms of volume 
we have a, a, a larger engine, a larger machine that is working. If you look at the soil nitrogen, it moved from 1.3 in control, not fertilized, 1.29 uh, per mil in terms of mineral fertilization, 2.7 per mil, 2.7 gram per kilos in compost, in your completely right part of the tree. And what is the potential for uh, nitrogen leaching? If we consider the potential nitrogen leaching in blue, in the water of the soil, it's about seven part per million in control, not fertilized, goes up to 11, in mineral fertilization, 12 in compost. So we have an increase, a large increase in the um, metabolic activity of our trees, a low soil impact, because most of the nitrogen goes to the microbial nitrogen. You see, microbial nitrogen moves from 11 to 22 milligram per kilo. In terms of micronutrients that sometimes are a little bit tricky because they can be also considered as heavy metals, you see that they, they, in 14 years, the compost has increased only copper, copper that moved from 33 parts per million to 40s, and zinc, 72 to 84, while iron has been decreased as a consequence of compost application. This is the total amount, so it's not actually very accurate. It's important to see the effect on heavy metal because many growers, also uh, organic growers, believe that use of organic material, recycled organic material, can bring heavy metal into our soil. Well, our uh, investigation over 14 years, over a long time, very long time, didn't see any different term of aluminum, didn't see any different term of chrome, any difference in term of nickel or lead. Uh, cobalt was a little bit decreased by compost application and cadmium was a little, very little bit increased. Mainly this increase was in the upper soil layers compared to the, to the deeper. Uh, just a little word on biochar. Biochar can be a very interesting source of carbon for our soil. In our uh, soil in the Mediterranean area, uh, biochar is not a fertilizer. Biochar is good for improving physical characteristic of the soil and doesn't actually impair root development. We see here on our uh, bottom right how the roots like biochar particles. They find inside oxygen, they find inside probably also a uh, good situation in terms of nutrient concentration. You see that they they explore the biochar particles. As I told you, biochar was not really effective in increasing the fertility. And we see that here we compare an amended soil, not fertilized, with the um, biochar. The red line didn't have any effect in terms of microbial biomass compared to an amended soil. But if we consider the compost, and the biochar with compost together, we can see an increase in the microbial biome. So biochar is effective in promoting um, microbial activity when it is uh, mixed, you know, at least in our, in our soil, when it mixes with, with compost. And also the microbial biomass was in some way modified and we see that the, um, we had an increase in both nitrosomonas and nitrobacter species that are um, uh, responsible for the fixation of ammonia, of ammonia. So these two bacteria can fix ammonia from the atmosphere into nitrate in the soil. So it can be a source of nitrogen directly from the from the atmosphere, but to have effect, biochar should be mixed with compost. Both biochar or compost alone, you see the two line, the gray line and the dotted line, didn't have effect, but the both, the combined combination of the two, the uh, black line with the triangles, increase both nitrosomonas and nitrobacter species in the soil. 
To finish with fruit quality, our investigation didn't show any effect of uh, organic fertilization on fruit quality. The parameter that here we consider is the pre precocity index, the skin color and the firmness. You see in red, you can see that the precocity index was similar for mineral and compost. So there was a delay in maturation of the, of the peaches compared to control. There was a decrease in the skin color of the nectarines compared to control. And there was an increase of the firmness of the fruit compared to control. That means that with compost 10 ton per hectare in mineral, we had an availability of nitrogen that delayed the maturation of the fruit. Looking at the literature, and we see the first one, Winter and Davis in 2006, said that under organic fruit management, we should expect higher, higher concentration of organic acid and polyphenols in fruits. But what is the explanation of this increase? It's mainly related to two reasons. One is the pest and disease pressure. Under organic farming, we have a higher pressure of pest and disease. So the plants, the trees should protect him, himself, itself should make some metabolite compounds, produce some polyphenols to defend against this higher pressure. The other explanation is the lower availability of nitrogen and in, an increase on of the ratio carbon nitrogen in the in the trees. In these ways, the lack of nitrogen, the increase of carbon move the, the production of secondary metabolite compounds like polyphenols. In other words, if we protect, if we have a good control of pest and disease, and if we have a good um, uh, supply of, of nutrients in the soil, we shouldn't have this different in the metabolism of, of the fruits. However, there is a list of good um, increase of the qualities, mainly in nutraceutical quality of fruits in peach, where it was found an increase in vitamin C and citric acid, in apple, where it was found an increase in nutritional fibers and flavonols, in pears, where it was found an increase in vitamin E, alpha tocopherol, in pineapple, where it was found an increase in volatile organic compounds and sugar, as well as in mandarin, an increase in volatile organic compounds. And by itself, also, we have seen an increase in volatile organic compounds in peaches, in terms of linalool, benzyl dates, ester, and lactones that can be used to check if the fruit is really under organic management or, or not. Other reports are on vegetables where it was observed an increase in uh, antioxidant and vitamin C as well in vitamin A precursor like carotenol. So we are reached the conclusion of this uh, presentation and I can tell you that organic farming uh, fertilizer management can be moved, the, this practice can be moved also in other agricultural system. In other words, the fertilization of fruit trees, in my opinion, can be carried out without the use of mineral fertilizer, but just only using recycled organic matter. Of course, of course, to do this, you should be aware that is difficult to predict exactly when mineral nutrients are available. Uh, particularly if the season is warm in winter, you might have a mineralization of nutrient of organic matter and that makes available nutrients over winter. And this is not good. So we have to check nutrient availability in the soil continuously. We have to find a way to check the availability of nutrients in order to reach uh, precision fertilizer management. If we have high level of, of nitrogen in the soil, it can be adjusted by the use of a proper organic 
fertilizer with a proper carbon to nitrogen ratio or by using intercropping. Of course, uh, the use of organic matter increases the soil fertility, but increases also the soil resilience, the possibility of soil to stand, to uh, overcome some stress of any kind of, of stress, and can also contribute to decrease the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Here, our um, the, the, the email uh, address for the, 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 my co-workers that I acknowledge and uh, thank you for your attention.